Okay, everyone. Uh, a very, very uh, kind welcome uh, to everybody uh, that showed up to, to my talk about um, writing loosely coupled microservices uh, with Grails. Um, I would say uh, Grails is a, uh, a framework or a technology that really enables you to write really good web applications that can also work very well in a microservice environment. However, what I have very, very often seen at uh, quite a few customers of mine is that uh, most of the uh, microservice applications that they have been what, writing, trying to write, or right now establishing, are very, um, I would say, synchronously based, uh, with a lot of synchronous communication uh, between them. And uh, with any kind of synchronous communication, you obviously uh, run into a few issues in terms of coupling. Yes, REST is not as coupled uh, as, uh, for instance, a web service communication or even some binary protocols and so on. But I think um, we can do a little bit better than this, especially when, we, when you want to go to an environment where you really want to be able to independently release services um, to, to reach a higher degree of decoupling and so on. And this is something uh, I'm going to talk about um, today in the next um, 50 minutes or something. Um, just a few words about myself. My name is Michael Plöd. I work as a consultant for a company called InnoQ. We're basically a software architecture, software development, delivery, and consulting company. And I've been using Grails for a couple of years now already. I have a couple of applications on Grails 3. Um, I know a few customers that are still on Grails 2, which is not that nice. Uh, but nevertheless, um, uh, apart from uh, the programming and technology stuff, I also um, read and care a lot about uh, software architecture. So basically, I'm going to mix up um, this talk, the next 50 minutes, I would say in, in two big parts. The first part will consist um, of some theoretical explanations of the architectural ideas um, that are currently being discussed in the self-contained systems or microservices or even domain-driven design community, for instance. Um, I'll give you a couple of hints uh, of ways that you can leverage these ideas. And then I'll move over to Grails. I'll give you a few hints how you can leverage those ideas uh, in your Grails applications. And um, to sum that up, I've prepared a, a live example for you folks. So I have an existing application that is highly based on domain events, messaging, and so on. But most of these applications are running on Spring Boot. And we're just tossing one of those applications out. And I'll add all these ideas that I explained in theory on the slides then into a brand new Grails application that we're going to hook um, into this microservice environment then. Um, just one more word. Uh, after the talk, um, I will also publish uh, the slides and links to the code examples that are on GitHub uh, on my Twitter account. So if you want to follow me on, on Twitter, please do so. My nickname is at BitBoss. Um, so without further ado, let's take a look at, I would say, usual communications uh, in microservices. Um, let's say we have a Grails application A, whatever that does. I, if it manages cows, dogs, or cats, it's totally ar irrelevant. And we have a, another Grails app. And I would say, usually, the interaction between the two, in most cases that I see, the interaction is usually done nowadays with RESTful HTTP. So basically, there is some REST resource that is being called. I mean, between two applications, that's fair enough. But let's uh, add a couple of more applications to that game. So for instance, when we have a call in this application, we're cascading throughout various other applications. And I mean, what is quite OK on one part of the landscape will sooner or later turn into a couple of really serious problems on that. I mean, 
basically uh, what this does is uh, you inherit a ton of problems when you are going this way of integrating your applications together. I mean, um, a couple of my colleagues call that a spaghetti type integration. Um, others uh, call it, um, let's say, also a lot of issues with scalability and so on and so forth. Now, why do I think that this is the dark side? Because you have to cover and address a lot, a lot of challenges here uh, in this kind of environment. When you build up your microservice landscapes with um, primarily um, synchronous call stacks. The first one here is obviously service discovery. I mean, every one of these applications does have to know where the other applications is being hosted on. I mean, yes, it has been solved. For instance, um, the Netflix Eureka service discovery uh, feature is one option that you can use. Uh, there is other options as well, but let's be honest, it's an additional piece of infrastructure that we need for this one as well. Because what we do not want to have, obviously, in microservice cloud native environments is a configuration through property or through configuration properties, environment variables. We want to be able to dynamically look up instances because on one day the application is running over there, on the other day it's running on a totally different host and so on and so forth. In Let's say in cloud-based environments, it's hard to know where they are running. So you need a piece of infrastructure. The next one is latency. Yes, we have to deal with latency here. And we have to deal with latency while and during the request is running. Because when I synchronously, when I'm calling someone up on, a, on their phone, um, when they don't pick up the phone, I am waiting in the line. So when they don't answer or when they are not answering very quickly, I am stuck on my phone waiting for the other party to answer my call. Um, of course, and that's something we'll see later on, we have to deal with latency in, I would say, more decoupled in an asynchronous world as well. But it's not a dealing during a live and a running request. It's basically we're sending out a mail and let's say, uh, when do they answer? Yes, but it's, uh, it's, it's a totally different uh, game here. Next thing is, of course, combined with latency timeouts. What do we do when the other side is not answering? Do we store the answer? Do we store the request and try it again later on? Uh, do we send out, let's say, a, a default answer through a fallback method and so on and so forth? I mean, basically, those two, latency and timeouts, can, of course, be solved with existing libraries. as Again, the Netflix stack, if you look at the Hystrix library, who's using Hystrix in production for synchronous calls? Um, who has never heard of Hystrix? Okay, a couple of people here. Um, Hystrix is basically a so-called resilience library. Um, Hystrix is a library that um, helps you to protect, I would say, a lot of time, especially synchronous communication, because uh, you run into very interesting issues here. For instance, uh, every application server, I mean every Tomcat or Jetty or whatever, um, and also the stuff that Grails is running on, um, obviously has a threat pool as well. And Hystrix is also establishing uh, threat pools for uh, other backend calls or for other restful calls so that we are not swamping the application server threat pool and drowning our application with slowly responding um, systems we're integrating with. And Hystrix also delivers us a fallback um, facility. So when, when an, another system is throwing some errors, for instance, uh, we can go back to a, throw, a fallback method and deliver a default response and deal with uh, the problem later on. But nevertheless, this is something that has to be done very actively and there are already solutions in place for that. Um, Hystrix is uh, implementing a circuit breaker and a, um, how's it called? Um, 
it's, it's basically establishing a so-called circuit breaker as well that protects backend systems when they are in trouble, that they are not swamped with additional requests as well. Very interesting library, and I would say highly suggest, uh, so if you, if you are dealing with a synchronous integration to other backends, and uh, if you are not using Hystrix yet, take a very close look at it. It's a Java library, so it's very easy to integrate into Grails or other groovy applications, of course. Um, the next thing we have to deal with is load balancing here. Um, yes, we can add hardware load balancers somewhere when we want to scale out, but these need to be configured as well. And when we have a very dynamic, highly dynamic environment, especially in cloud environments, uh, reconfiguring hardware load balancers all the time is something that's uh, a little bit cumbersome. And uh, when we work together with a service dis discovery service, we know which instances of a given service are up and running. We know that, yes. So we can establish some sort of a client uh, side load balancing. One tool you can integrate in any Grails application is obviously a ribbon which is also a Netflix library. But it has to be done as well. So you add more and more complexity in or order to ramp up a very stable and robust system. And that's a, very, uh, a thing that has been very implicit uh, when we were building, I would say, a yeah, monolithic applications. I've seen a couple of really, really big Grails applications that, I mean, yes, Grails is a highly productive system, but in the end, those applications also ended up being huge, big deployment monoliths um, that have grown over the time. Um, and when you split up, when, when you split those monoliths up into smaller pieces, all these dependencies suddenly turn from implicit to explicit, so you always have to manage them and you have to add a ton of uh, complexity and infrastructure in order to deal with these uh, kinds of situation here. Now, usual architectural patterns that we often see is an event-driven architecture and, and that is something I'm going to pitch today a little bit. Mm. Building up an application architecture that is built on domain events as a first-class citizen. That's something I'm going to talk a lot uh, today. Of course, REST is there. Service-oriented architecture has been around. Microservices, self-contained system, I talked about that. And now there's two more, uh, CQRS, which is Command Query Responsibility Segregation, and um, the reactive or the actor model as well. Um, CQRS is also very interesting in a combination uh, with event-based architectures. I will show you a couple of these ideas later on in the practical demo part, how, how these ideas can be moved together. Now, I said that I want to address the topic of domain events um, very prominently. And um, I would say any application, every Grails application, can fire off certain events. So we can say, hey, a shipment has been delivered. The taxi has been ordered. Um, the taxi showed up at the venue. The taxi picked me up. The taxi dropped me off at the airport. So basically, there are a lot of uh, areas where we can model basically a lot of business functionality, a lot of business requirements in a series of discrete events. And haven't, haven't we all been in, in some strange uh, meetings with the business people where we had the, uh, the, the gut feeling that, hmm, I don't know if our points really came across, if we really were talking about the same language. Um, actually, that happened to me quite a few times in the past. And I realized that um, when I, especially in environments where I started adding the concept of a domain event as a first-class citizen for the integration and for the interplay between various components, the communication with the business people got a lot easier as well. <coughs> um, so... The idea is to build microservice applications, 
now today using rails but it can basically be transformed to any other uh, technology that is tossing away basically um, the idea of a, a lot of synchronous communication. It, this is an ar architectural approach that wants you to go asynchronous first, asynchronous, 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 and in given scenarios, as an exception, on a synchronous um, call stack. Now, is this something new? No, not at all. If you look at, uh, I would say, a lot of mainframe applications, actually they, together with MQ series as a message broker, um, they, they've been doing that for ages already. Um, this, this way of asynchronous communication. Um, but I think, um, especially during the times where we were talking about service-oriented architectures, um, the idea of async processing got a little bit lost because we wanted, in, in the service-oriented architecture times, we wanted to centralize it. We wanted to centralize everything. We wanted to have one central customer service that serves all customer data. Now, with the idea of microservices, we actually want to go away from that for a little bit. Actually, we're now, most of organizations I'm working with are now working to decentralize their IT. And um, I think uh, this way or this approach uh, really helps us in decentralizing things. And this is for me a very big, big driver for uh, writing really highly decoupled applications. Now, basically, um, the, the, the general idea is that we have, let's say, a shipping application and a customer notification application. And the shipping application realized, hey, a shipment has been delivered. So it fired off a shipment delivered event, put it on a messaging system, and the customer notification application just has a, is, is, is registered to a topic on the messaging system, receiving that event, and is doing something um, with this event. When you think about modeling events or ramping up events, <coughs> I'm sorry, I have a little bit of a sore throat, so please excuse my coughing. Um, an event is always, always, always something that has happened. It's always something that happened in the past. It's not something that's happening right now. It's not something that will happen. It's always something that happened in the past. And I would say good event names are, for instance, a shipment delivered event, a customer verified event, or a card checked out event. Those are really good event names. Bad events would be a create customer event, a will save item event. Why are those too bad? They are in present tense or in the future. But my favorite is a very flexible event. You can use it for everything. You don't need anything else. It's the silver bullet. Um, it's the do stuff events. Um, uh, a good friend of mine who is giving a couple of talks, I think, at the Scala days, two kilometers down the road today, um, Jochen at Code Pitbull is his, um, his uh, Twitter handle, uh, recently wrote on Twitter, uh, a, a, developer, a good developer should be like a werewolf should be afraid of silver bullets. So you should be really afraid of using this one. Uh, I mean, it, it just doesn't say anything. Um, so please uh, don't do this. An event is also immutable. Just think about Donald Trump got elected into the White House. It's immutable. You can't change it. He got elected, like it or not. It's, it's this, like this. And that's the same thing with an event. Now. What we can actually think of right now is um, when we have a couple of applications. Now, this red thing down there with the gray background, that's, let's say, one big, one Grails application. And um, I would say, especially uh, in the case of Grails, and especially with Grails 3, we have a very attractive way of dealing with these things because Grails enables us to work with events internally and externally. Um, Grails 3 has um, integrated um, Reactor um, as a library 
and Reactor comes with an event bus uh, or ev an event-based system that r allows us to structure, I would say, existing Rails applications in a very decoupled manner. Who's already been playing around or using the event bus of Rails 3? Yeah, yeah, a few folks. Yeah, uh, who have who has never heard of uh, the event feature in Rails 3? Ah, okay, few. Yeah. Okay, so um, I would say um, this is very interesting for the internals. I mean, you can build applications internally event-based, but also externally event-based. Now, let's say we, we're building an application for um, applying for a, loan, for a loan, for a credit. I want to buy, let's say, a new, um, uh, a new car and I need a credit for that because I can't afford the big Tesla that I'm dreaming of. Now, um, so I, I need a credit. So basically what's happening in this credit application, Grails app, for instance, or Spring Boot app, or whatever you want to do, is um, you can enter your personal information. You can enter some details on the loan, and um, you can enter some information on your financial situation. Is that something that other parts of this application landscape are interested in. Think about the scoring. Every bank is doing a scoring on a credit. Now, <coughs> is this scoring application really interested when you've just entered a part of the credit application? No, it's not. It's only interested when the credit application form is complete. When you have completely filled out the application form and said, yes, I want to apply for that credit. And this is where external credits come into, uh, external events come into play. So after we've done all that, we can go, go ahead and fire off an event to the outside world and say, hey, a new credit application has been submitted. So for instance, a scoring component can go ahead and, um, and do some calculations and some judgment on your, on your situation and say, yes, we're giving out that credit or no, you are not credit worthy. We are really sorry about that. Now, um, one thing regarding the, um, um, let's say, this messaging, especially with the external events, we want to send those over a message broker, obviously. Now, um, I don't know how many of you are working in big enterprise um, organizations. I guess a couple of you. And I think a few of your organizations paid a lot of money for a so-called enterprise service bus component. Big, big thing, very complicated, very powerful, tons of features. And I can assume when you say, yes, we want to go that way, you go to your management, that some of those folks comes ahead and say, hey, we still got that license uh, we're paying for. We're not using it because it's too cumbersome, but why don't we use this one for this? No. 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 Don't do that. Um, what you want to do here is you want to use a lightweight message broker architecture. The um, rule of thumb is dump pipes smart endpoints. So the, the, the logic, the smartness, should be in your Grails application, not on the message broker. The job of the message broker is to deliver messages in a reliable way. Full stop. That's it. No model-to-model -model transformation, no orchestration or whatever. Um, it's just there to deliver your messages. And now let's talk a little bit about Grails in this game. Um, when I take these, um, these parts, um, there are two ways we can deal with this in Grails. The first one is for the internal events. You can use the, uh, the event system in Grails. Um, in my eyes, a lot of people were uh, obviously, and for very good reasons, cheering that Grails 3 is now built on top of Spring Boot, and Spring Boot is absolutely awesome. I'm a huge fan of this one. Um, and that it embraces Gradle and so on. 
But I must say for myself, right after that, the new killer feature in Grails 3 is the event system, to be honest. Because you can loosely couple plugins with this one. You can build logic into various plugins and you can loosely couple your plugins. So it's just a plug and play kind of thing that you can enable with this. I'll show that you, to you later on in the code. Um, and this is a very powerful system. And I mean, um, if, you, if you look at Project Reactor, um, and um, I don't know if you've looked a little bit into the news in the Spring community, Spring 5, uh, Spring Boot 2, uh, the, the major driver is reactive applications. So Spring Reactive on Spring Core and Spring Data, Spring Web Reactive, those, uh, this is the hot stuff in, spring, in the Spring 5, Spring Boot 2 uh, ecosystem right now. And Grails has integrated Reactor a couple of years ago already. Um, so we'll take a look later on how to integrate this. And I would say for the external handling of events, um, there would be two options you can, uh, you can work with in Grails. I would say go for a message broker like Apache Kafka or RabbitMQ. And um, for Rabbit, um, you have already a, a plugin, the Rabbit native uh, plugin, for instance, which works really well. And um, there's also a new thing. Um, you can also add uh, the Spring Cloud Starter Stream Rabbit or Kafka uh, to your uh, build uh, files. And um, right now, I got it up and running in Grace 3 in terms of sending out events. But the consumption side, there seems to be a little glitch uh, with... Uh, groovy closures and uh, Spring's Java type matching system. I didn't get that up and running together, but I think uh, that will be addressed uh, in the near future. Um, I would take a close. I would keep a c very close look on uh, Spring Cloud Starter Stream Rabbit. Um, I think there will be uh, some very interesting opportunities also for the Grails world. I would say um, now the question is. When we've done the technical part, how, how, how would we deal with events? I mean, obviously, if we take a look back, the application submitted event, what can we do? We can put the whole credit application form as a payload into the event. Would work, wouldn't be a very big deal. The next thing is we could add a REST URL as a payload to the event and um, give a little bit of additional standard information with the event so that the majority of the consumers is okay with the event and those applications that need to, be, that need to do special things can uh, then go to the REST resource and draw in their uh, added uh, information. Yes, we do have a synchronous call here, absolutely, but we do not have to deal with service lookup, for instance. So we just get one URL, we don't have to look this up, and, but we reduce the amount of synchronous call, and which obviously is a good thing. And we can just send out an empty event and have a feed mechanism where other applications are pulling stuff in. Uh, what I see a lot in microservice environments is the usage of Atom feeds, XML Atom feeds, and there is an event going out, and a consumer just goes to the feed and grabs, uh, pulls in the new information from this one. Now, I would say, let's get our hands dirty. I have um, prepared also for a couple of other talks and uh, as a playground for event-based systems, uh, a complex application. It is a loan application where we are applying for a credit. And this application landscape exists of five applications. It consists of a application process application, of a credit application, a customer application, a scoring application, and a credit decision application. Now, these applications, the way they are now on GitHub, are all running on Spring Boot. So no Grails application here. But let's just go ahead and grab out the scoring application and replace this one with a Grails application. So we're not using the Spring Boot scoring application. Uh, we're going to use, we're going to build up a message-based um, Grails application. 
and hook this into this process. And what you will see is that we, I will not touch a single piece of code in terms of all the other applications. So, without further ado, I go ahead. <coughs> in my workspace, uh, Grails, create app, um, let's say, um, whatever, loan scoring Grails. I create the app, and while this is running, I will, um, and I'll go ahead and uh, add it to my, uh, you know, uh, IDE. I'll go ahead, workspace, loan scoring Grails. And while this one is uh, ramping up and uh, adding um, all the stuff to the IDE, I'll quickly show you the loan application. This puck is a big businessman. He's a bad banker. So um, he decided, I want to screw up people by shelling out totally overpriced loans. And um, so what we can do is um, now a lot of um, the applications in this process are already running because um, this is um, the event-driven Spring Boot application here. And you see the, an application process application is running, a credit application is running, a customer application and a credit decision application are already up and running. Now, one part is missing. It's the scoring application. I don't have it up and running. And I'm going to apply for a credit uh, right now. So yes, I want to have a loan from the puck. Let's say over 12 months, 1,200 euros per post food for the dog. Um, I add some income detail, let's say 3,000 over there. I have to pay 400 euros rent and I don't live on a big shoe. And yes, I want to apply for that credit. Now, I need to enter some personal information. Michael Plöd, Kreuzstrasse 16 in 8331. München, Munich. Now, you see, a couple of things have already happened. So we started the application, we entered the credit application form, we entered the customer data, but the process got stuck. There is no scoring right now. Nothing's happening. So we obviously have to add something to the game in order to enable the scoring now. But you can see the nice thing here. Would the scoring call be a synchronous call, we would be stuck in the process. The, the reply that we, could, we had to send out would be, huh, sorry dear customer, we can't finalize your request, please try again later. But what we see here in the RabbitMQ management part is I have already prepared a credit application entered event for my scoring in Grails. And you see, there is one message waiting in there. It's in the, in the message broker. And when we're finalized with the live coding part, we'll see that we can process this request later on. Now, it's in there. Um, the first thing that I am going to do is um, I will add a new uh, plug-in uh, to my, um, to my uh, Grails uh, project, which is uh, the RabbitMQ native plugin. RabbitMQ native, surprise, surprise, gives us integration to RabbitMQ for the messaging. Now, the next thing I want to do is um, I want to go ahead and add a little bit of uh, configuration um, there. So the first thing, I'll put the uh, server port on something uh, totally different, let's say uh, 8666, and um, I am going to add a little bit of configuration for RabbitMQ. Now, this configuration tells me my message broker is running on localhost, and you see we are establishing a queue called credit application and, uh, entered on Grail scoring 
which is hanging on a topic called credit application enter topic. It's this one in there. I already have a message in there waiting for me. So, so far for the, um, let's say, uh, for the uh, configuration of the whole thing. Now, obviously, the next thing I need to do, I want to consume this message that's waiting um, in, my, in my queue for me. So, uh, obviously, I need a consumer. Now, um, the nice thing is this uh, RabbitMQ native um, plugin already gives me a, a, a means uh, to create uh, consumers. So it's basically Grails uh, create consumer, um, credit application, um, no. I, I, I call it application entered consumer. Now, while this is running, ah, I was in the wrong project. Loan, that's the way to go. So, now in there, I see we have a new uh, package, Rabbit Consumers, and it al already gives us a template uh, for the uh, consumer part. Now, the first thing we need to do is we need to configure a queue we're talking uh, with. So, queue is this one from our configuration. Now, that's the one uh, we are talking with, and um, Let's take a look at the, the structure of the message um, we, we are dealing with. Obviously, we need to have some insight uh, on this one. So I'll go in there and um, I, can, uh, I can get uh, the message. So it's basically this one. We have an event ID, we have a creation time, an application number, the credit details, the financial situation, and the earnings, and so on and so forth. Now, um, this is an uh, event style that puts all the payload in the event right there. So I get everything. I get the complete, um, I get the complete uh, thing here. Now, in order uh, to save us a little bit of time and uh, I would say uh, on coding, uh, what I'm going to do, I'm going to use the JSON slurper. As you see, uh, this works with JSON, um, the whole thing. Um, so I'll just uh, read in uh, the whole body in the slurper. And what I'm going to do now, I'm not going for a, uh, let's say, synchronous delegation to a service here. Who wants to do a synchronous service call? No one. We'll do something different. What we're going to do is um, we're sending out an internal notification event. I, I use from the event part, notify, financial situation, entered. And I just send the body with it in there. Now in order, this is Grails 3 internal event handling based on Reactor. In order to enable that, I have to add a little bit of um, configuration for Reactor. Um, Reactor is uh, something, um, what I'm going to use is a thread pool executor that works with five threads in parallel and can store up to 2,084, um, uh, 48 uh, messages in there. So I'm just sending this out internally. And I can, that's basically my message consumption part. Now, I want to have a service that's consuming this internal event. Um, le let me create a service. Rails create service, um, let's say scoring service. So I created um, our scoring service in there. 
And the next thing that's also internal part, internal workings um, of uh, the event stuff in, um, in Grails, I make this a consumer. So basically, um, services and controllers all inherit the event trait in Grails 3. So it's all already in there. Now, um, what I can do is, I can uh, now go ahead um, in my consumer and use, uh, create a new, um, let's say, a new method, def um, receive uh, internal message, def on a, let's say, credit application, event, and I'm going to use a selector annotation on that one. And here, on the uh, payload of the selector application, I am using this key that I'm notifying with. So, selector, right there. And um, now, in there, I can, since this is a, an object from the JSON Slurper, I can pull out uh, a little bit of data. Um, I have prepared uh, some scoring logic um, already for us. Now, um, I'll do some really big copy-pasting for a second and I'll lead you uh, through the um, complete code in a second. Now, let's ignore this part down there. Basically, I'm just pulling out the financial situation, the credit details, um, the term, the amount, and the application number from the thing, and I have a method that is basically performing the scoring for me. So, I, I calculate a sum of outgoings, sum of earnings, I calculate uh, the monthly cost of the credit, and um, uh, I'll put this away right now. When the earnings minus the outgoings minus the monthly cost of the credit is bigger than zero, we say, yes, that scoring has been a success. And otherwise, we say, no, the scoring has been negative. Now, I want to publish another event. I want to say, and that's something you see with the Rabbit message publisher. I want to go ahead and say, in the case of a positive scoring, I just send out an event, scoring has been positive, or scoring has been negative. Now, um, in order to do that, I create a, a new class. Um, I just put, uh, it's a simple um, groovy class that I can do there. Why is this hanging? Yes, source main groovy. Mm, new groovy class um, loan scoring grails dot scoring event and um, this scoring event has a string event ID a string application number and a um, date um, it was I think event time but I'll look that up in, in the other project. Now, basically this application process, application from the Spring Boot applications, let's see uh, what it expects me uh, as an event that's incoming, um, which is the scoring done event. Ah, it's creation time, that's what we need. Okay. It's not event time, it's creation time. I've been writing too much Java code lately again. <laughs> okay, now um, we have our scoring event and we can now uh, ramp this one up. So basically I create an event ID as a UUID, I put in the application number and uh, basically add a new date as the uh, creation time and let's build a JSON string from this event. We want to publish JSON throughout all of these things. Did you have a question? Yes? Ah, okay. Thank you very much. Quick fix. Hmm? Where? Score?
on the receiver, on the consumer. Yeah, but the body, that's okay. Uh, this is this parameter over there, and this ends up in there as my result parameter. I think that should work. It's basically using the body variable from this one, and this one is ending up as the result in this method. I think that should work. Um, because um, the body, this one, is a JSON string. And we want to read in the JSON. Take a look. Um, I'll show you. Um, you see, it's basically um, the body is this payload string. So that's JSON that's coming in. So that's the reason. Okay. Now, um, after we've done all of that, um, we ramp up a, a few rabbit prod, uh, properties. It's very important that you set a uh, the a correct content type because otherwise other applications may run into trouble uh, parsing uh, the output. And basically, I'm just sending the same event to two different uh, topics depending on the result. One, I have a scoring event that's being sent out to the positive topic. Otherwise, I have a scoring event, same payload, that I'm sending out to the negative topic. Now, I would say, let's give this one a try. So, Grails run app. <coughs> Uh, there was an internal error. Give me a second, please. Ah, that's what you meant. Mm. <sighs> of course. I'm sorry. <laughs> I've been too long in planes in airports today. Ah, thank you, thank you, thank you. Yes, of course, I have to edit at the rabbit message publisher as well. Now. Two more minutes left. So basically, grace scoring has been processed. Let's start again. Somehow not set. <laughs> Thank you. The last shot that I have.
That looks good. Boom, you see? It all worked together. And now there's a zero over there. <laughs> Just in time programming. Um, so what I, what I would uh, recommend uh, to you folks, um, just uh, so that I'm not going a lot over the time, um, if, if you want to dig deep into this stuff, I have published this complete Spring, code ev uh, Spring Boot event stuff on GitHub. I'll publish the edit Grails thing that I just wrote on GitHub as well today. Um, so you can merge the both together. And um, I'll tweet uh, the links to the slides and to the code uh, samples um, on Twitter. Um, there was one question. I think one question is okay. Uh, uh, from your program, you have one floor. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Um, I think um, the um, in this in this complete application landscape, there are also uh, some applications that are storing away the events that use events as a first-class storage citizen. Um, in this case, I just threw the credit details away because after I have scored them, the scoring application is no longer interested in them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's yes. Uh, that's true. Uh, it depends how transactional you interact with your message broker. You can actually have certain message brokers that do the taking in the message out of the queue and the processing of the message in a transaction. So when the application crashes and it crashes gracefully, let's say it like that, um, you still have the message in the queue and you can reprocess it. That can be done. Okay. Thank you very much. Um, I'll be around for a couple of more minutes uh, for a few questions. Just come up to me. Unfortunately, I have to leave again to the airport. So, um, but if you have some more feedback, some more questions, Walk up to me while I'm packing up. Uh, thanks for the interest. Thanks for coming out. And <laughs> cheers.